children at Hillside family. We're just sending you a message to say that we miss you and we love you and we can't wait to see you again. We hope you're having a wonderful time playing outside in the beautiful sun and making lots of art and paintings and crafts and spending obviously a lot of time with your moms and dads. We're just sending you lots of love and you can't wait until we can see you again. Say bye. 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 Hello Hillside kids. So good to see you guys on the other side of the screen again. We are all missing you so much. I hope you enjoyed the lesson for today. And I know that some of you have gone back to school and we are so proud of you for being so brave and going back to school when things look a little bit different. And there are still some kids that are going to be going back next week and maybe only in August and July. But we are praying for you and we miss you so much and we really look forward to the day that we can give you all a big hug again. Lots of love. Bye. Morning kids. It's so great to be with you again here today. I've been missing you so much. I just want to remind you about a story in the Bible that's specifically about kids. It's from Mark 10 and it's when the parents bring their kids to Jesus to be blessed by him. The disciples see the parents and they stop them. But Jesus says to the disciples to say, bring the kids to him. And then in verse 16 it says, he took them in his arms, he put his hands on their heads and he blessed them. Wow, how cool is that? Miss you guys lots and love you and I can't wait to see you. Bye! Hello boys and girls. It's so lovely to be with you today. I have got some exciting news. Usually when we're at church we do a new theme every term. So we've decided that we are going to start a new theme from today. So for the next few weeks we are going to be learning about the heroes of the Bible. You know, these heroes are ordinary people, just like you and me. And they did incredible, incredible things. And they loved God very, very much. So I am very excited to be on this adventure with you and learning about all these amazing people in the Bible. So, talking about heroes, have any of you been watching the satellite launches in America? How brave are those astronauts? They go all the way up into space and we are able to see the most incredible things in space because of them. Now, talking about space, don't you love the stars? I love looking up at the stars at night. Have you ever tried counting all the stars? It is impossible. Now, who of you know the story about a man that God promised would have more children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren than all the stars in the sky. Yes, clever children, you guessed right. His name was Abraham. So we are going to have our precious Auntie Elizabeth read us the story of Abraham and Sarah. Hello boys and girls, let's read our story. Son of Laughter, God's special promise to Abraham from Genesis 12 verse 21. Years passed and things didn't get any better. People were still just as cruel and mean to one another. They still got sick and died. God's world was still full of tears. It was never meant to be like this. But God was getting ready to do something about it. He was going to make all the wrong things right and he was going to do it through a family. Abraham, God said, how many stars are there? God was about to tell his friend a wonderful secret. Let me see, Abraham said, rolling up his sleeves. But have you ever tried counting the stars? <laughs> then you know how hard it is. 993, 994, 997. Uh, uh oh, no, wait. One, two, of course, he kept on losing count. Too many, he said. Guess what, God laughed. I will give you so many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, you won't be able to count them either. Abraham couldn't help giggling at such a wonderful idea, but he stopped himself. How could he have a family? Don't be silly. He didn't have any children, let alone grandchildren. He wiped away a tear. 
Anyway, it was far too late for him to start having babies at his age. He was 99 years old. Oh, what could God mean? Abraham, God said, believe me. And then God told Abraham his secret rescue plan. Abraham, I will make your family very big. God promised, until one day, your family will come to number more than even all the stars in the sky. Abraham looked up at the night sky, thick with stars. You will be my special family, my people, and through you, everyone on earth will be blessed. It was an incredible promise. God was going to rescue the whole world through Abraham's family. One of his great, great, great grandchildren would be the child, the promised one, the rescuer. But it's too wonderful, Abraham said. Can it be true? Is anything too good to be true? God asked. Is anything too wonderful for me? So Abraham trusted what God said more than what his eyes could see. And he believed. Now, when Abraham's wife, Sarah, heard God's promise, she laughed to herself. But it wasn't a happy laugh. It had tears in it. She had always wanted a baby. Could her dream come true? Could she really have a baby when she was 90 years old? No, of course not. Don't be silly. It was far too late. Sarah didn't believe God could do what he promised. She had forgotten that when God said something, it's as good as done. Of course, it was so easy for God to give her a baby son as it was for him to make all the stars in the sky. Sure enough, nine months later, just as God had promised, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy. They named him Isaac, which means son of laughter. And Sarah laughed, and this time it was a glorious, happy laugh. Her dream had come true. God would do as he promised. He would always look after Abraham's family, his special people. And one day, God would send another baby, a baby promised to a girl who didn't even have a husband. But this baby would bring laughter to the whole world. This baby would be everybody's dream come true. Thank you, Auntie Elizabeth. So kids, from hearing this story, how does Abraham inspire us as a hero? What do you think? It was his faith. Yes, Abraham trusted God. He trusted God with more than his eyes could see, and he believed. Let's go and have a look in the Bible to see exactly what it says. So if you can turn to Genesis, and if you can remember, Genesis is the first book in the Bible. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 15 and we're going to read verse 5 and verse 6. So kids, this part of the Bible is when God and Abraham are talking to each other. Then God brought Abraham outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And God said to Abraham, So shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed in the Lord. This is such an encouraging scripture for me. Because even though Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90 years old, now that's very old. That's probably as old as your great-grandparents. Now can you imagine your great-granny or grandpa having a baby? No, that would be very difficult to believe. But that is what God promised Abraham. And Abraham believed that it was possible. Now, sometimes it's hard for us to believe God's promises. Do you remember what a promise is? A promise is when somebody says they're going to do something and they actually do it. So sometimes it is difficult to believe, just like Sarah. She struggled a little bit to believe that that was going to come true because she had been dreaming about having a baby her whole life. But what did she say when Isaac was born? She said, my dream has come true. 
God kept his promise. So what does it look like to trust God? I know, we're going to do a little activity to see what it looks like to trust God. Hello, Luz. Hello, Mom. Hello, guys. Thanks for coming to help me today, my darling. It's a pleasure. Now, Mom, you didn't ask me to bring anything for this experiment today. Well, I thought I'd keep it a bit of a surprise because we're doing something a little tricky this morning. So okay. What you will need for this experiment, though, is a glass of water that's filled two-thirds to the top and a piece of cardboard that can cover the top of your glass, the rim of your glass. Now, Luce, do you trust me? Of course I do, Mom. Okay, well, that's good. So, do you trust me to take this glass of water and put it over your head? Um, if I said not a drop was going to go on you, would you trust me if I said that? Well, that would be a little bit hard to believe. Okay, well, what if I said I was going to take this piece of cardboard and then tip the glass over and not a drop was going to go on your head? Would you believe me then? That would still be really hard to believe. Okay. So, can I do it? We can give it a go. We'll, right. we'll see. We'll Let's see. see what happens. <laughs> okay, so guys, if you have your glass of water, take your cardboard, put it on top, hold it down firmly with your other hand, and we're going to very gently turn our glass of water over. So you might have a little tiny drip or two coming out there, but you should be able to move your hand away and look. So Luz, can I try and put this over your head? Okay, <laughs> you can try. Ta-da! Not one drip. Thank you for trusting me, Luz. It's a pleasure. So what do you think is holding this cardboard up? Is it air pressure? Yes, that's right, air pressure. We can't see the air pressure, but we know it must be working and it must be there or the water would just fall straight out of the glass. You know what this reminds me of? It's just like God. He's there supporting us, holding us up and always with us, even though we can't always see him. So Luce, it was a little hard to trust mommy in the beginning, hey? Yeah, it was. Because no one really wants water all over their heads. Yeah. But did you see that I knew what I was doing? Yeah, you did know what you were doing. Yes, I did. And guys, that's just like God. He knows exactly what he's doing in our lives. We can trust him. Yes, we can. And we can always trust him to keep his promises. Thank you for coming today, Luz. It's a pleasure. God told Abraham to count the stars. Now, who created the stars? Do you remember in the first term, we learned all about creation? Yes, God created the stars. And what did he create the stars out of? Nothing. He spoke them into being. So kids, the God who created the stars is the same God who is going to be our promise keeper. And that is who he is. So we can trust God. We can trust Jesus. We can trust Holy Spirit. Let's go and have a look in the Bible to see what it says about us trusting him. Right, so we're going to grab our Bibles and now we're going to the New Testament. We're going to go to John chapter 14 and we're going to verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That was Jesus talking. We can trust God and we can trust Jesus because they're always there for us. Auntie Jill, thank you for praying for us this week. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you always keep your promises. Help us, Father, to have a strong faith just like Abraham and to wait expectantly for you Fulfill your promises. We thank you that you are always faithful. And we love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Auntie Jill. So kids, remember to have faith. Remember to listen to worship songs. Spend time in your Bibles. Spend time walking around your garden talking to God. 
Remember, he's always listening. And he is our promise keeper. And you know what? His timing is always perfect. Love you guys and can't wait to see you soon. Kids, thank you for being with us this morning. Now remember that we are posting activities and messages on your class WhatsApp groups. So please ask your moms or dads if you can have a look at their cell phones to see what's going on in your classes. We really would love to hear from you and to see photos of you doing some of the activities. If it's the object lesson on um, the lesson every week or even something different that your teachers have posted on the group, we would love, love, love to hear from you. Thank you so much.